Charity from the Lulu and Hazel Quilt Shop in Durant, Oklahoma. So you've made the decision. You've bought the Janome Continental M17. You've brought your boxes home. Now what do you do? Join me today as we unbox and set up the M17. Okay, first things first, we're gonna start by unboxing the main unit. So this box, this um, kind of heavier but smaller black box, this that says main unit is the main sewing machine unit. This box here that isn't quite as heavy, but it is larger. So it's the embroidery unit. Now both of these boxes would be a team lift. Don't try to lift or carry these out yourselves. Um, they're heavy and this one especially is quite awkward even though it's lighter in weight it's very hard to try to carry that in yourself so anyway we're going to start by snipping the straps and unboxing the beautiful Janome Continental M17 magnets, um, optical lenses, more feet. This is your automatic stitch regulated foot. This is a USB cable. This is your power cord and this is your fabric guide. So we're going to set all this to the side for a second. I'm going to leave the power cord out. Let's see what is next. needle plates, your straight stitch needle plate, and your HP needle plate. So those are very important. Here is your knee lift. And here is a quick start getting started guide. So we'll look at that in a minute. Here is your buttonhole foot attachment. This is the AccuFeed foot. And this is your embroidery foot with the laser. Okay, and then we're going to take this off, and all that's left in this box is the machine itself. So, let's pause here for a second, and we're going to get this machine out of the box. So now you can see we've got the machine out of the box, and I just wanted you to see this part. So this little piece of packaging it has nothing inside that was just a piece of packaging so that can go back in your box or wherever you've done with the other packaging I'm going to take off this little screen protector here there is still some like a plastic covering over this screen I'm going to leave mine for now that is it's your machine you do whatever you want with it I'm also going to take off this little piece of blue tape and we're going to Take that off of there. So as you can see here, which you'll be able to see it better when we turn the machine on, the, we found two needle plates in the box. Like I said, your straight stitch plate and your HP plate. You, your machine comes with a plate installed already and your zigzag plate. And in a minute we will show you how to install a new plate whenever you'd like to do that. 
Okay, so now we've got the machine and the accessories that are boxed with the main unit out of the box. Next, we're gonna go for the embroidery unit. Okay, we got the machine unboxed. We've got the packing off of it, and we are ready now to unbox the embroidery unit. Now, this might be the box that scared you the most. You didn't expect the machine to come with this box. It's big, but it's not scary. It's just got the embroidery in it, very safe and securely packaged. So let's pop it open, see what we got. Okay, here's what we've got in the box with the embroidery in it. This is your case for all your feet and accessories. I love, love that Janome includes this case. It's phenomenal. This is a sample pack of stabilizers and inside there is a bottom weight bobbin thread in there, Janome brand. This is the dust cover for the machine. Now the dust cover covers the main unit. It isn't so large that it covers the embroidery unit. These are extra large covers for the storage boxes that attach to the embroidery unit that we will talk more about in a minute. This is your foot pedal for the machine, as well as the thread cutter pedal, as well as the mounting bracket that these both screw onto this bracket. And so then you can move them together as one unit. We'll talk about that in just a minute too. And then these are your embroidery hoops. So you have your smallest hoop, which is the hoop SQ10D, which is a 3.9 inch square hoop or a 100 millimeter square hoop. Then we have your RE20D, which measures 5.5 by 7.9 inches or 140 by 200 millimeters. Then we have your, this is the SQ28D, which is an 11 inch square hoop or a 280 millimeter square hoop. And then we have the big daddy. This is the one we've all been waiting for. The um, RE46D, which is an 11 by 18 inch hoop or a 280 by 460 millimeter hoop. All these hoops have their grids inside. And then there's one more fun accessory box in here. This is your embroidery quilting kit. It's a little piece of tape on this box. You don't wanna rip your box, take that off. So this has your copy of Artistic Digitizer Junior inside as well as the quilting hoop, which is, I'll tell you the number of this one. Never remember these off the top of my head. This is hoop ASQ27D. And this hoop, rather than a flimsy plastic grid, this has a heavy acrylic grid. This is a fully magnetic hoop. It is not a two-piece hoop. And these are your magnets for it. So I always keep this in this box. I keep a lot of auxiliary um, accessories that I don't really like, like the cloth setter or anything like that that doesn't fit in my carrying case, but 
I don't want to pack away with the box. I stash them in this, put it on the shelf, put it under the machine, and you're ready to go. Now, we have to pull out this huge piece of styrofoam. But then, inside, we find the embroidery unit. So I'm literally just going to, if you feel right here, there is a, there is a hand grip. And there's also a hand grip right here. Let me see if I can take you a little closer and show you this hand grip. Um, but I am just going to grab this by these two grips and just pull it straight out. You can see this hand grip right here. So that's how I'm going to get a hold of this to pull it out of the box. And in addition to those two grips, these are your storage boxes and covers. So here we go. Okay, now we are to this right here. I've got the embroidery unit and the machine, and I am ready to just attach the embroidery unit to the machine. And it is as simple, so you'll see right here, see if I can get you a little bit closer there. So right here is where the embroidery unit attaches to the machine. I'm literally just going to pop that on. You see now it is seated and is on. If you ever have trouble and you pop it on and you feel like it's just not fully seated, just barely lift up on the machine and take some of that downward gravitational pressure off and then you are good to go. From here, the side covers are going to slide on. So these are shaped, you can kind of see this one goes on the front, this one goes on the back. I'll show you, so it's a little storage box and a cover. So this part, just this part right here, slides on right here. And it just slides on and pops on. And this is where I keep my, um, this is where I keep some additional feet that I want quick access to. And these covers come fully off. And then Janome also includes the larger cover that we talked about earlier. Let's pull that out and show you how that works. There's one for the front and one from the for the back. I think this is the one for the back. And this one right here. is the one for the front and these larger covers will just go on like that and so you see that gives you a little more space than this one but whichever one you choose depending on how you like to sew and your space they just pop off and clip right back on and there we go okay so from here we are going to grab inside of this quick start guide. So this has shown us a lot of the things I've told you here. A lot of our getting started. Um, so you need to read through all of this, the feet that are included, you know, just a very general getting started guide. But what I am looking for is these little, this little piece of paper with these little stickers. So these stickers, use the camera right here. These stickers are to be placed right here and right here. And this just protects the machine from where the embroidery hoops might rub during, during embroidering and um, just kind of protect the finish of the machine. So I'm just literally going to stick one in that corner. Right. 
here. Let's go that packing tape and you can see there were four. I've used two, there's two more. Just file those away wherever you file these quick start guides and manuals. So if those ever peel off or get start up, you can replace them. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the power cable. Um, where I'm at in this room, I have to use an extension cord or surge protector. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna plug into an extension cord. You should put this on a surge protector. We are only gonna be plugged in here for a few minutes on this one. And I'm going to plug into my extension cord first. Before I plug my extension cord into the wall, and that's just a good practice anytime you're playing in anything electric, don't plug any kind of a machine or any device into an extension cord already plugged into a wall. This cuts down the risks of any kind of power surges. And I am not an electrician, but that's something my dad taught me years ago. And I think it's a good practice, so I do it. I always plug into the extension cord before I plug it into the wall. Okay. From here, I'm gonna reach around and just above the power cord, hit the power button. And here she comes. Okay, so it's gonna tell us to raise the needle bar slowly. So what we're gonna do is just raise it slowly. And now it's gonna tell us, please remove any hoops. Keep your hands clear because your carriage will now resume. Move to the home position. So the embroidery carriage is gonna move. We can take this out. Okay. And so your machine is on and ready to go. So let me go through a few things for you that you need to know right out of the box. So when the machine starts up, even though we have the embroidery unit attached, it is in ordinary sewing mode and it has an ordinary sewing foot on it. It has um, the zigzag needle plate. So all of the stitches are available to you. So first thing we are going to press this button right here that says open. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it. Open. And we're going to open that. And that's going to open up our cover. And okay, these are our, our thread spool stand. So I'm going to, you never want to try to pry these up because you will break them. This little toggle right here pops them up. And then you do want to, with your hands, just fully extend this and that gets that's ready to accept your thread okay time to talk about bobbin winding on your m17 one of the great things about this machine is that it has an independent bobbin winding motor which means you can actually wind a bobbin while it's sewing the motor that it uses to wind a bobbin is different than the motor that it uses to sew great one of the many features we love it about this machine just like we've talked about all throughout this video so I'm gonna take my thread I'm going to start it on this post let me see and so it shows the diagram shows how it wants the thread to come off and as far as I can tell mine is coming off according to the diagram so the thread guides that are marked with the gray box behind them are for bobbin winding so we're gonna come let me adjust this just right here we're gonna come up through this one and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna go through two, which is right here. And you just wanna, I take um, both a hand on either side and kind of keep tension and really floss it through there. And you really wanna make sure it's not gonna come through that guide. Then we're gonna go around three, which is the little metal screw. And you again, I keep some tension here to make sure it gets under that thread position. And then, need a bobbin. I have a Janome bobbin here with the Janome bobbins, I'm going to put them on the post and then twist until they click. You'll feel as much as you'll hear a very small click when that bobbin's in the right place. So now I'm gonna take and just wind a length of this thread 
I don't know, five or six times, and then I'm gonna run it under this guide. And let me see if I can zoom in a little better where you can see that. See around, there's these little guides that you can zoom through or you can floss the thread under right there. So, and that also, there is a thread cutter, but that kind of cuts the thread when you go under that guide. Then I'm just gonna pop the post and then I'm gonna hit the button. And then we're gonna sit here and watch that bobbin, bobbin winder wind a bobbin. And then we'll be one step closer to ready to sew or embroider on our Janome CM17. Okay, and there it's ready. And now I'm just gonna pull it up and off and around the thread cutter. And then there we go, ready to go, ready to embroider. So now we're gonna come down here and I'll let you see me load it into the machine. So I'm gonna pull off this cover and the cover shows me what direction it wants the bobbin thread to go off. So I wanna make sure that my bobbin thread is coming off just the same as that picture shows, and it does. And now I'm going to follow these guides. Here, we're gonna put our thread, we're gonna pop our bobbin down. We're under this guide around there, around that thing, and through the cutter. And there, we have got our bobbin in. Okay. And now we're ready to go. And our next step is going to be threading. Okay, threading the Janome CM17 is one of my absolute favorite features to show. So I'm going to show it to you right now. So before I do anything, before I even put a spool of thread on this machine, I'm going to needle down, needle back up, and lock the machine. So this accomplishes several things. It makes sure that the needle is in the perfect position for the automatic needle threader, that the eye of the needle is just right. This also, it, it puts the presser foot down. It so that is also something you need for the, for the needle threader to work. It locks all the other functions so you can't accidentally hit something and get something out of alignment. And it opens the tension discs to be ready to accept thread. <clears throat> so, so before I do anything, I needle down, needle down, needle back up, and I lock the machine. And if you get in the habit to do that every time before you thread this machine, you will be so much happier. That just makes everything in the place that the builders and manufacturers and designers of this machine intended it to be for threading. So that's how, that's how they say to do it and that's how I do it and everything works every time when I do what they say. So I got a little bit too much thread here. I'm gonna cut that off. So now, what I'm gonna do, we're, we've got our needle in the right position, our machine is locked, which means our tension discs are open. I'm gonna plop my thread down there, and I'm gonna grab a <coughs> spool pin cover, and with, let me see what kind of thread I have. With glide thread, I think I'm gonna like the small spool pin cover, because it just fits right down in that hole. <clears throat> Perfect, I love that. Okay, so now we talked about when we wound a bobbin that the thread guides with the square behind them are for bobbin. The thread guides numbered without the square are for top thread, <clears throat> excuse me. And you can follow the diagram here, but we're gonna go over one. I like to keep tension on both sides of my thread Floss it under two, make sure it doesn't hop out of there. So we're gonna go, so that was two. We're gonna go under three, around the curve for four. And now when we get here, for five, we're gonna go around here. 
that's five. And then for six, six, again, I'm still holding tension right here. We want to make sure we get all the way, click into that groove. And then seven, we're going to go through here. And now, let's get a little closer. So for eight, we want to go right through that groove above the eye of the needle and click it into the left. We want to go right in there every time. And then nine, we're going to go what I call through the mouth of the alligator, <clears throat> which is part of the automatic needle threader. And then we're going to come around here and we're going to go over the top of the thread cutter and cut the thread. And now we're going to hit this button, which is our needle threader, and we're going to watch that needle thread. And it's been my experience that if you follow these steps, you are going, that's going to work every time. So now we're going to talk about <clears throat> how to attach your, your foot pedal and your thread cutter pedal to this bracket bar. So let me just show you first. The cord for the, for the foot pedal is hidden in this access panel right here. So we're going to remove that access panel, slide the foot out, unwind this, and thread it. Oh, it'll go a couple more times. Everybody has a different amount of space between their machine and their floor. So you want as much cord as we can get. So we're going to thread that on there and we're going to reinsert the cover. Okay, so the cord for the thread cutter um, pedal is going to just be tied up with a twisty tie. So what I took note of is the fact that this end of the thread cutter plugs in to this end of the foot. So they are intended to be oriented like so. And so right now I've got this plate upside down, the feet are on the bottom. So since I want these oriented like this, I'm going to mount them like this. Okay, so this plate comes with a little baggie of screws and things. So let's see what we have. So there are four screws on this one and two screws. Four screws on the big one, two screws on the little one. Okay, so that is just a cord keeper. You feel like the cords are getting out of hand. Those are some a little additional feet if you need some sticky feet to maybe make it level. So I know there's four screws on this one and two on this one, and I definitely have two different sizes of screw, and one has four screws, and the other just has two. So I know the four screws go with the big plate, the little screw, the two screws go with the little plate, and also there are only two washers, so I will surmise that they go here. Now this isn't just like, the most fun thing to get these started and on here, but nonetheless, they go. It's not too tough of a job. So I'm gonna put this here, and I'm gonna line this up with, you also wanna make sure you get them going the same direction, both plates. You don't wanna have a, you don't wanna have an upside down foot. So you wanna make sure not to get these cross threaded but I'm just gonna get these started in here. And I'm gonna just take, these are Phillips screws, but I'm just gonna use the sewing machine um, 
screwdriver that came with it because I believe it'll work. So I got them all going. Now I'm just going to tighten it up. There's quite a big spot there on that Phillips that this straight screwdriver will work. I'm going to tighten that up. Great, great, great. So now, this is going to go under here. So I'm going to put it under there, get a little more. Once we get one going, the other one will be easier. Okay, there we go. So we've got that one in. So now, and look, okay, yeah. Now, let me get this one going. Make sure you remember to put that washer on. Okay, so that's that. Now, I don't really think I need to put these on, but if I find that it's wobbly or something, like uneven on my floor, I will maybe put it on. So now you see this, we probably could have done this before we installed it, but that thread cutter pedal just plugs in right there. And now you've got your foot pedal and your thread cutter pedal. And so this is just gonna plug this plugs in right here on your machine. So I'm just gonna, you don't even really have to be able to see it, just pop that in right there. And so now your foot pedal is attached and press the thread cutter pedal. It's gonna cut the thread. Isn't that a great feature? We love it. So now let's talk about all of our accessories and how they fit into our Janome zippered case and just kind of what they are, an overview. So, I am going to set this out and I'm gonna look for my feet. And we'll go through these. So you get a pack of needles in your machine. You should have five Janome bobbins. There's four right here and there'll be one more in here somewhere, I'm sure. So I like to stick those right here. So this foot right here is foot QR and this is just your standard ruler work foot. And if you see, all of these spaces are labeled into the next tray right here. So I'm just going to go through here and find which foot fits where. So there's QR. This foot is QV. This QV is a free motion quilting zigzag foot and QV has a spot right here. This is QZ and QZ is a variable zigzag open toe foot. And QZ has a spot right there. This is the Janome um, Continental M17 comes with two bobbin cases, one for embroidery and one for regular sewing. So this is the 20G case. So that means this is gonna pull more tension. And so this is for embroidery. And that is the one installed on the machine is the 10G or the regular sewing embroidery case. Get a little pair of embroidery scissors. These are a curved tip scissor. So I'm gonna put those right in there. Some of this stuff in just a minute. Get to some more of these feet. We have a brush, 
for cleaning, a dusting brush. This is a seam ripper. Can't ever have too many seam rippers. Okay, we've got a variety of sizes of spool pin covers. Um, it's best to, you know, every different brand and size spool of that thread requires kind of a different spool pin cover. So it's good to have all of these and I just kind of keep them here in the bottom, this tray here that I'm putting the third tray, it has room for these kind of things right here. So this case is three trays that stack. It's well, um, well padded, very nice case. These are also for your, um, for your thread spools. These are spool rests. So if you're using a larger cone of thread, these take up the extra space so it doesn't jiggle around. A screwdriver bobbin cleaner um, this is for cleaning out the bobbin case and we will probably do a separate video on this but just don't lose this little vial of bobbin cleaner so this is QC this is the free motion quilting closed toe foot in that has a space right there. This is F2, which is an open toe satin stitch foot. Goes there. This is in no particular order. Also, this is PDH, which this is your open toe darning foot, and it will fit right there. So there's both darning feet are PDH. This is the open toe. This is the closed toe. They have the same. There's two slots marked PDH. You can put them whichever slot you want. This is foot G, which is a blind hem foot. Very handy to have. Goes right there. This is foot M, which is the overcasting foot. See that where you can see it? Foot M, overcasting foot. Very handy foot to have. Foot D, which is the rolled hem, rolled hem foot, right there. Foot F, which is again a satin stitch foot, not to be confused with F2, which we already put in there, which is our open toe satin stitch foot. So you can see the difference between F and F2. This is foot P which is your embroidery foot, just your standard embroidery foot. Let me see what they actually, um, embroidery foot, foot P, your standard embroidery foot goes right here. This is foot Z, which is your conceal zipper foot, foot Z goes right there. These two feet, these are both foot O. So this is your quarter inch seam foot for piecing. And so foot O comes with a blade. So this is the bladed foot O. And it also comes with a quarter inch foot that does not have a blade. Everybody has a different preference on this. I personally prefer the non bladed foot, but many, many people in our shop they prefer the bladed foot. So it's literally just how you like to sew, not a right or wrong answer. I love that Janome includes them both. So because I'm going to use this foot more, I'm going to put it in the top tray and I'm going to put the bladed foot in the middle tray. This is foot E. Um, this is a zipper foot, not to be confused with the conceal zipper foot. This is your buttonhole foot. And this is your button sewing foot. So have different functions. I keep my buttonhole foot generally in the bottom of this box or I'll keep it in one of the back trays because it is quite large. Um, so anyway, I usually keep it personally. I don't make a lot of buttonholes. So I keep it in its little Ziploc baggy in a box or in one of the trays. Um, so this foot is the QO, 
which is the free motion quilting open toe foot. And it lives right there. And then this is your HP foot. And as you can see, it is not a clip on foot. It is a just a full foot. And it is made to work in conjunction with the HP needle plate. So just remember, anytime you want to use any of these HP system feet, you need to change to the HP needle plate. So this was allows us to show where we stash our needle plates in here. So they fit right in here. So I'm going to put that HP plate on bottom. I'm going to put the straight tip stitch plate on top. So there, right there. This little attachment is the button shank plate. These are spool nets that if you ever have trouble with your thread coming off the spool in a funky way, you'll want to use those. So this is the twin dual feed um, or AccuFeed um, foot system. So this is like a walking foot. It's dual feed, feeds from the top and the bottom, and it has many clip-on feet attachments. So right now what's, um, what's attached to it is the AD foot, and the AD foot is just your standard foot, dual feed foot. So I'm going to pop that right here. And then the other attachments that come for this are the UD, which is the open toe attachment right there. The OD, which is a bladed quarter inch attachment. So if you want to do um, a dual feed um, quarter inch, this is the attachment you'd want to put on there. And then this is the SD, which is the stitch in the ditch attachment for this, for this um, dual feed system. And then this is the This is the single dual feed foot holder. As you can see, it is quite smaller than the double. Smaller foot, um, less feed feeds on the top. So this, what's attached to this one right now is just the dual feed foot single. And then ED is also attachment for that. And that is just a zipper foot attachment. So VD and ED. And then there is actually a dual feed foot for the HP system. So this is the dual feed for the HP. And you see that because it says HP2. And again, anything that says HP, you want to use it with the HP plate. And that's because that's just going to set your needle to where when you when you use an HP foot in conjunction with the HP plate, it's going to automatically set your needle to a perfect scant quarter of an inch. So you, it's imperative that those two things work together. This is a sub thread guide stick for the embroidery unit. And then, so we showed you, I showed you the regular embroidery foot, foot P. This is um, foot PM. So this is actually the laser foot. That's a laser. Gives you more accurate in lining up. I specifically like to use this when I'm doing um, edge to edge quilting in the embroidery machine. I'll use this foot. I use that foot most of the time. And one of the greatest features of this machine also is that it comes standard with the 
accurate stitch regulator foot. And in a minute, I will show you where these two feet plug in to power them. The accurate stitch regulator comes with four feet attachment. So number 13 is the ASR Clearview ASR QV. So I've used this foot when you're doing a, like a free motion zigzag. It's a really handy foot to have. Then we have the ASR Open Toe Foot, which is ASR QV. ASR QO, excuse me. ASR QO. It's an open toe free motion field quilting foot. This is ASR QR, which is the ruler work foot. As you can see, this is a thicker foot than say that one. So that's for ruler work. And then last but not least, we have the ASR QC, which is just the closed toe free motion quilting foot. I'll show you real quick how these feet attach and detach. So there's a little groove here and there's these little feet here. So just fit it in the groove and pop it up. And then there's a button on the back to disconnect it. So again, just pop it into the groove and then up. And to pull it off, punch the button, pull it off. So those are handy. These feet, all of these feet with the cables and the um, attachments, I store those in the storage compartments. There is a, um, there is a separate storage box that can be purchased separately that stores the accurate stitch regulator. If you'd be interested in purchasing one of those, let us know. Um, and then we've just got a few more things left. This is a stylus and it fits into the side of the machine. I'll show you that in just a second where that fits. And a few more things in this box. Put my needles down here. Um, these are these are magnetic cards that show all of the decorative stitches if you would like to see them in your hand rather than on the screen to see the numbers and things these are magnet clips that just offer some extra stability for your embroidery hoops these are optic um, magnifiers you can see they magnify, they fit up on your machine and they give you a better view of your stitches and the eye of your needle and everything. So there's three different magnifications and they fit right here in the box. That's a handy feature that we really appreciate that Janome includes. And then these two are couching feet. And this is a couching foot attachment that feeds the yarn through if you're interested in couching. And I just keep those right here. And then all these, all the empty places, those are feet that do not come standard, but that can be purchased as an additional, um, as an additional purchase to the machine. This foot and the clip-on foot holder are actually already installed on the machine, so they are accompanied. They are, they are included. And then um, the fifth bobbin is already in the machine. So there are five bobbins. And um, so that's all your feet and accessories and they fit really nicely in your case, in your three tiered case. And then you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry about where they are and they store nicely. Let me do this real quick. I just keep these in here as well and the magnets so I can get to them quickly. And then I'll show you where I store these other pieces. This is the quilting guide bar. So if you are um, using one of the quilting feet and you want to quilt in um, similarly spaced increments, that bar helps you space it out. Another feature you need to know right out of the box is how to switch between modes, um, sewing modes and embroidery modes. So right now, um, so we can use these buttons to navigate through all the different stitches on the machine. And there are many. We go get into heirloom stitches and quilting stitches and decorative stitches. There are many 
wonderful stitches available on this machine. I'm fascinated every day by the amount of stitches on this machine. And we haven't even gone through all of them. You can also navigate up here. And then this is if you want to do a light monogramming. Again, this is not the embroidery function. This is on the sewing function, but there are many fonts you can choose from. And you can just type whatever you want. And then you can use the start stop button or you can use your foot pedal and you can just sew that out that out of here but then the main thing you're going to want to know is how to switch to embroidery mode so up here this little house we're going to hit that house and then this gives us three options ordinary sewing is the mode we were just in you can see that that takes us back to all of our basic stitches we hit the house again we can go to sewing application mode this is where we can access some specialty stitches curve stitching top stitching this would also be where we would access quilting, free motion quilting, ruler work, applique, that sort of thing. When we hit it again, it's going to take us, we can also hit embroidery mode. And this is going to tell us it's going to switch to embroidery mode, make sure we have the proper presser foot attached, and everything is going to switch to embroidery mode. So here we go. Now we're in embroidery mode. And now you can navigate through all the designs that comes loaded standard on the machine and you can see things organized by the hoop it would fit you can um, see all the font options for monogramming and then you can get back to your edit screen to see what you're doing so let's say we're going to pick a design it would fit in our thing that will fit in our smallest hoop so we'll say this apple we're going to make a teacher gift and we're going to so that's that's how it will fit in the hoop we can enlarge it or decrease it by 20% right here in the screen. Let's make it 20% larger. And then we're ready to stitch it out. We'll just hit OK. The machine is going to tell us that the hoop is going to move. So to keep our hands clear. And then I will show you how to attach the hoop when you're ready for embroidery. So when you are ready to embroidery, I'm going to show you how the hoop attaches. Now we have nothing hooped up here. We just got our machine. We just unboxed it. But um, so this is how the machine hooks in. You want the pointed, more pointed nose of this to go into the groove. So we're just going to take this and we're going to line it up there. And one of the most important things is you want to hear a positive pop. Just like that. And then to, to remove the hoop, you just want to pop it out and pull it back out. And then. So at that point, this hoop is not locked in. You did not hear a click. So wait till you hear that click when you know it's locked in. So my tip is I don't want to push this embroidery. If I put a lot of pressure right on this, that will actually move. So I kind of set my fingers here and I just, with just my thumb, I pop that in. So that kind of holds this steady so it's not moving on me. So I can get just the pressure I want to pop it in. So now I'm show you how to disconnect your standard clip on foot and connect your embroidery foot. This is also the same process for connecting your ASR accurate stitch regulator foot. I'm going to pull the embroidery foot out of our case. First things first, we're going to get in here and unscrew. Just loosen this screw. I try not to remove it all the way. Okay, so now we've got this clip on foot off. So this is going to slide onto that screw in just the same way that the other one came off. Whoops, and there we go. We knocked it off, so I'm going to get it started back in there. I'm going to slide this over the post. Okay, so there it is. See the connector there? 
So this connector is going to plug in right there. So we're going to take this around and just pop it on. So now we have our embroidery foot attached and we are ready to go. Some other basic functions you need to know. These buttons here, this is your needle down and needle up. This is your thread cutter. This is presser foot up, presser foot down. This is back stitch, stitch in place. And this is your automatic needle threader. This button right here is um, the lock function and you need to lock your machine anytime before you thread it or before you change your um, needle plate. And then these are some basic um, settings, um, needle position, stitch length, um, tension, presser foot height, and those are a right here at your fingertips and also down here on your screen. And then to another function you need to know is how to change your needle plate. So what you are first going to do, we're going to press the lock button. And then you'll see there's a picture of a locked lock and there is what looks like a needle plate popping up. So we're going to click that. Let me see if I can get them both in the shot. So when I hit that button, the needle plate pops and I can pull it off. I can clean out the machine. I can um, remove the bobbin. I can remove the bobbin case. I can switch out to the other bobbin case. And then when I'm ready to put it back on, I just fit it in there and it just magnets down. Now, if I pop it, and then I realize I didn't need to pop it. After about four seconds, it's just going to pop itself right back down. And then because you change the needle plate, the machine is going to ask you to make sure that you have a proper presser foot or you do not need to change the presser foot before you get started. And that's just, you can X out of that. And now we can unlock. There's also a key right there. We can unlock the machine. You did it. You have successfully unboxed and set up your Janome Continental M17 sewing machine. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much for letting me guide you through this journey. Be sure and like this video and subscribe so you can be notified of all future videos. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. What is the next thing you'd like to learn about your Janome Continental M17? And we will look forward to seeing you next time. But in the meantime, stay warm, stay happy, and stay caffeinated.